Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to take you through how to upgrade the um, inbuilt OSD on your Paris V5 mega board. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go through the whole process. There's uh, from doing the code to the GUI to loading the font, etc, 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 everything you need to know. Um, there's a few tricks to it um, and we'll go through all those. First thing I'm going to do, I've got my file downloaded. Now this is the release candidate. It should be very close to what you get as the final release, but I wanted to get a bit of a jump on the code. So what I've done is I've gone into the KVT OSD file and I've opened up KVT OSD INO and here it is in uh, the Arduino software, which if you haven't already done so, you need to download so you can manipulate the file. <clears throat> you shouldn't actually need to do a lot, but there are some variables here we can look at in the config h file, which I'm going to take you through. Now, if you're loading this onto a Paris Mega board, you shouldn't really actually have to do any of this. Um, it's all pretty much done for you. Um, but uh, I'm going to take you, show you some of the options you can look at and some of them you might need if you're using another board. This code will actually run on some other on-screen display boards. Um, I won't go into details here, but um, basically if, you've, it's, if you run the KV Team um, OSD then on your board already, then this is compatible with that board. This is a modified piece of code from the KV team code. Uh, Shikra did most of the work. Um, and uh, it's been modified specifically for the, pa par the Paris Mega 5 um, board um, with uh, some cool new features and a nice new clean look. So um, I'm just going to go through. The only things you should need to change in the code is the config H. Um, if you want to change some options, most of them you don't need to if you've got the V5 board, but I'll go through the ones you do need to change. If you've got a different board, uh, you may need to play around with these defined inputs. Uh, and there's also this line of de define here, which is use vSync. Now vSync is not available um, on the original release Paris Mega Boards. You can actually mod the board to enable it, but it's a tricky mod and I don't recommend it for most of you. Uh, as the note says, it removes the sparkles on the board. Um, I see the sparkles when I've got a black screen. You'll probably see them later on when I'm showing you the on-screen display menu. Uh, but typically in flight, I don't see them. So it's not really that um, necessary a mod, but there will be a, revision, a revised um, uh, v5 board uh, out later in which case you will be able to use the vsync um, feature so I'm just mentioning in that now in case you get in case you end up with a later revision board again not a problem with the v5 board but if you've got an older board and using an outboard GPS if you have an i2c GPS you need to define this or the speed indication will be incorrect it'll be up by a factor of 10 You'll be doing 40 kilometers an hour and the speed will tell you you're doing four. Okay, again for the V5, don't have to worry. Uh, the map mode settings, this is a new feature, uh, part of the things that uh, Shikra has added to the code. Um, it's still under development and it still uh, probably won't be truly refined to the next version, but it's here, you can play with it. Um, and basically there's two things you can set for it. You actually enable and disable this through the GUI or the, um, or the inbuilt menu of the OSD. And basically what it does is it replaces the, um, the artificial horizon with a map display um, or a radar display. If you're in map mode version zero, you're on radar where the aircraft is home, so the center of the radar display is the aircraft, and the display circles around that center point shows you where the home location is. If you're in mode, if you're in, if you set one here, you're in map mode, which the center of the map is where you took off from, 
and the map shows you where the aircraft is re relative to that map site, which is the default that the code ships with. I change it myself to radar mode because that's just what I prefer. You can also, using this define, set north as the reference of that map, as opposed to if you leave it shaded out, up on that on-screen display map is the direction the aircraft was headed when you armed the aircraft. Okay. Um, the next thing, define decimal, leave. You can change the dot to a comma, but I wouldn't bother. Um, I have enabled this define, the shift down, on my uh, Carbon Bird uh, diversity receiver LCD, not on my goggles, just on the LCD. If I am displaying coordinates at the top, half of the coordinates disappear, that line disappears off the top of the screen, um, which means you can't actually read the GPS coordinates. Uh, so if you have that problem, you can enable this and it actually just moves the top half of the display down a line. Um, it does sort of bunch up the center a little bit, but uh, chances are you probably won't notice it. So if you have that problem, there's the solve for it. Um, the next define is dependent on whether or not you, uh, you your local um, radio licensing laws. Um, there is a call sign display available on the on-screen display, which times out after a certain amount of time in flight. If you enable this define, uh, it will the call sign will stay. Um, on the on-screen display all the time. It will be a permanent feature of it. Um, some countries' regulations require you to show the call sign at all times. You would have to check your local laws to see whether or not you need to use that. The next couple of sections really are if you're using um, boards other than the V5, so I'm not going to go through it. Uh, the last section, I'm going to skip right down, the last section down here you don't have to play with. So I'm just going to have a quick explain about this. There's a switch available. Uh, you have to set it in, um, you have to enable it in the multi wii code and you have to enable it in the um, on-screen display GUI, which allows you to use a switch on your radio to basically go to a minimum display. So you've got the full display of the on-screen display, flick a switch, and most of the clutter goes away. And here you get to state whether or not the stuff goes away. So display min off means when you flick the switch on, that item is no longer displayed. So for instance, uh, multi-wee heading graph position disappears when you flick the switch. Um, the flying time your actual time in flight is always on display, okay? And if you want to change this, all you have to do is retype that phrase or copy one and paste it where the other is. So if you want, for example, the sensor position to always display, all you have to do is change min off with always, and that will always display, okay? Or you can go back and min off that particular feature. So you get to decide in your minimum view what actually is displayed by labeling it always and what isn't displayed by labeling it min off. Okay. Pretty much you can leave it as is unless you've got a specific need, want, desire. I, unless you do actually know what you're doing, I recommend you don't play with that. Um, having my made the changes I wanted to make, just going to make sure they're actually there. Uh, I did want shift down. I didn't want that. I wanted that. Okay, I'm just going to click on save. We're ready to upload now, but what I'd like to do just in case is just click on the verify button, this tick here in the top corner, and let it compile and make sure there are no errors before I do it. The next thing you need to do is up the top of the screen you'll have a Thing, an item called tools and under tools you've got the board type and the serial port so you need to make sure you're on the right board type 
which is Arduino Pro or Pro Mini, 5 volt 16 meg at with at mega 328. Okay, so you need to make sure that board type is selected. And down here at the bottom of this screen, you can actually see that. The other thing you need to select is the serial port. Okay, now it's not letting, my serial port isn't plugged in, so it's not letting me pick the option. But I know that this down here, which is the Dev TTY USB Serial A603KHA7, is the correct port. If I was plugged in, that would be within that um, drop down. Um, I know that is the correct port. Now it's pretty easy on a Mac because it's the only Dev TTY USB serial um, port that you get. The number changes based on different cards, but if you're always using the same FTDI, it will always be that same serial number for the FTDI. Um, in Windows, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Um, and I'm going to put a link below to um, a video that Charles did um, on uh, how to find the correct COM port. Uh, and you should have a look at that if you're on Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 8.1. That will help you find the correct COM port to use. Okay, next thing we need to do is upload it. Now, there are a few tricks to uploading it. Basically, you do click on the upload button here. I'm going to actually switch to camera view in a second to show you how to do the upload. So what I've done here is I've unplugged the OSD lead and I've plugged it into my... I can't really turn it around much because of the, the lead. I've plugged it, the OSD loom into my Paris Hacker FTDI. Um, you can do it with the good old-fashioned red ones and I've shown you the technique for doing it on another video but it's much much easier if you use the dedicated FTDI to actually upload the code. Um, in preparation to do this though, one thing important note, I have unplugged the BEC that powers the Paris board. Really important you do that before you try and load code. You won't be able to actually load code into the IOSD. Um, if you've got any power connections on this side of the Paris board. So in this case, I'm just running a UBEC, um, so I've unplugged that lead. If you were powering off all of your in BECs that are built into your ESCs, you would need to unplug your ESC leads. Or certainly any one that's got a red wire still stuck in it. Okay, if you're using a BEC, you shouldn't have any of those, but <clears throat> just be aware you need to unplug whatever normally powers the Paris board. Okay, the only pat at the moment the Paris is powered up, and it's powered up via the USB, and that's the way it needs to be. It needs to be only powered by the USB. Um, no other power source can be plugged into it. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to go to my, can't see, but I'm going to click on um, upload and I'm going to do two things at once so it might be tricky to watch. But what you need to do is watch for the green LED here. All right. And there's a little push button on here. It doesn't hurt to practice pushing it. You can see when I push it, the whole thing shuts down and starts to repower straight away. Okay, and up it comes. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to hit the upload button there and I'll watch for a green LED here and then push the button as soon as I see that green LED. So I've clicked on upload. I'm watching, 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 green LED, flick the button, and now I get, probably hard to see there, a red LED flashing. That means I got the timing right. If you don't get that red LED flashing, you're not actually uploading the code. Okay? So we'll go back to the software now and see what's happening on the software side of things. So here we are back with the code, and you can see here it says done uploading. Um, now, if you mistime that button press, it will say uploading. And you may, you'll may you get some sort of error. You'll get some sort of writing in this window here that is coloured orange. If you see anything, any sort of error, any writing in orange down here, it didn't happen. The code didn't transfer. So make sure you've got, it says done uploading, and there's nothing in this window after you've pressed that button on the FTDI. Okay, guys, uh, I'll uh, come back to you with another video, part two of this video, showing you the on-screen display and how that needs to be used to finish off the installation 
on the new iOSD code. See you guys soon.